Hello guys, welcome to Over the Top. Welcome to the channel. Chris here, I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Uh, winter has sprung a leak here and there's a blanket of snow on the ground this morning and it is cold. Uh, I don't even see any break in the cold temperatures probably till next week which they're going up to the pluses again. And even then, it's going to get really cold so I don't even know if the ground will thaw out or if it will freeze. So. This might be it, I think I might be done, but anyway, we're going to start with the indoor videos. This will be my studio for the next few months. Ugh. Anyway, way much better looking when you're outside. Uh, so what we're going to do today, and uh, you know, a few things along the way, is we are going to build a electrolysis for uh, removing rust from uh, items. I do have a uh, large amount that I've collected over the years that I'd like to... Uh, you know, get the rust off, get them restored up, and looking pretty good. I have personally never built an electrolysis machine. This will be a first, uh, so uh, I'm sure there will be some mistakes, and I'll uh, try to point out the ones I know I'm making while I'm on the way, because I know I don't have everything I need. But hey, I'll give it a try. Uh, you know, I'm not going to hurt anything as long as I'm careful. You know, electricity's nothing to mess with. We should be all good. So if it doesn't work, I'll get the right stuff, and then we'll uh, take care of it. But my idea here is just, uh, let's just build one with stuff that you probably might have laying around the house and very easily can get this done. So anyway, uh, some items that you're going to need. Uh, we'll start uh, with a container. You will need some sort of uh, plastic container for the, uh, for the water and solution. So uh, definitely get a nice container. Uh, I'm not sure if this one's going to be big enough. Uh, I know it's not big enough for some of my items. But uh, for some of the smaller things, it'll be fine. It'll be real easy to retrofit it into a bigger container later on. So, uh, yeah, get yourself one of these. Uh, I just used a, I believe it was a cat litter uh, plastic container. I just cut the top off. Not the best job, but hey, it'll work. Uh, you will need a power source. I am using a 12-volt 12, uh, 12 uh, charger. Uh, it's DC, so you'll need a DC 12-volt charger. I don't know if this one tells me the watts, 1.2 amps, 60 hertz, 28 watts. Hopefully it's enough. If not, I think I have another one we can use. Uh, we will be taking care of the end of that. Don't worry. That'll come. You will need some sort of iron bar. Uh, rebar is the best. I have one piece of rebar, but it's painted, so uh, I don't want to mess with it and take it all apart. I kind of use it for my uh, kiln that I have outside. Uh, so in place of that, I have a old... Uh, bit there from my uh, saw. I used to use to drill into the Christmas tree when we had a real one so we can put it on the stand. I will be using this rod for the uh, for the one for the uh, positive end. Uh, what? Okay, you will, uh, this this will work. I'm going to use a coat hanger. Uh, I will show you how to prep this for the uh, for the items that we're going to use. Uh, another item that you're going to need uh, you can do this with vinegar and uh, salt, I don't have vinegar. I went to get it today and it's gone. Most people have vinegar in the house, but uh, ours got used up when I came to do this. But anyway, I'm going to just try it with salt. Uh, it's a good conductor of electricity when mixed with water, and hopefully that works. If not, we'll get the right stuff and we'll uh, go from there. All right, uh, one other thing you're going to need is a good uh, pair of uh, snips. Uh, hopefully these are good enough. Uh, they kind of got left outside. They're a little rusty, but that's okay. We have we're making something to get rid of the rust. <laughs> you will also need a nice uh, heavy hammer, uh, something you can get a good purchase on. You know, so you can when you really swing, you can get you need you know need a good hammer. So anyway, yeah. Oh, you want to know what the hammer is for? Well, the hammer is for if this doesn't work, we can take care of it. Just thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, first things first, we got to do some prep work to get this ready. Uh, we'll start with the uh, the rod here, the uh, the positive bar that's going to be in your solution. Uh, ideally, you're going to want one at each corner of the solution. I'm just going to try it with the one for now. Uh, I got a bunch of copper wire outside I can use to to link them all together uh, if I need to. I'll try it this way. If it doesn't work, we'll switch it up. Like I said, all this is pretty easy. And it's nothing that I'll take time to correct or, or anything. So now the problem with this is there is a, uh, a coating on it. Uh, I'm going to take some sandpaper and I am going to uh, prep this. So let's start with that. Let's get this prepped 
and then we'll move on to okay guys so what i got here i just got a piece of sandpaper i had laying around nothing special it uh what is it here it's probably 60 or 80 grit doesn't matter uh yeah i'm not too sure and i think it's 60 grit doesn't really matter i just want to get this uh this coating off of this so the uh electrons or the pixies can move from this to your uh item that you're going to de-rust so let's just uh get this all hard up get all this good stuff off get the rust off uh rust is a good insulator All right, that should be uh, good enough for the people I work for. All right, so that uh, that should be cleaned off good enough. Uh, hopefully this metal should be fine. It's uh, made in the good old US of A. All right, so okay, that's uh, all cleared up. So the next step now is uh, the cord itself. Uh, let's see if I can untangle. I should probably untangle this before I started. This is just an old cord I had laying around. I got uh, you know, stuck from over the years, I guess. Uh, this is uh, probably uh, something from the, my boy there when he was a lot younger. They're growing this, these toys. <laughs> anyway, so uh, first thing we got to do is remove this end here. Uh, I guess this is just a... Uh, that'd be a nice uh, purchase if I get that out, but it's all... I'm not even going to worry about it. Just, just cut it off. Alright. Warning label. <laughs> Who needs that? Alright. So we're going to have two sides here. Uh, we have a white striped side and a solid black side. Uh, again, and on this one here, there's a rough side. Uh, so it's ribbed. Uh, same as the white side. You'll, generally when you have these kind of two-sided cords, let me just put this apart. I'll give you a close-up look. I'm not too sure the light is there, but uh, right there you've got... I hope it's focusing... All right, there's two. You got a white one and a black. So you got a white stripe and on the black. Generally on some cords, you may not have a color, but there'll be some writing on it. And it's usually a rough side. You'll have like a rib side. In this case, the white side is like ribbed on the side. That ribbed side is gonna be your negative lead. So that is your negative. Your positive will be the black. So that'll be your hot. The hot line is going to be going to this drill bit. So your hot will be on this. Now your negative side will be going to your rusty item. For me, I'm just gonna, uh, for this purpose, just use an old uh, uh, railroad peg just to uh, do some tests on it, make sure it's working. Okay, well, I'm not actually connecting it directly to this. That's where the coat hanger comes into play, but uh, we'll get there in a minute. Okay, so, Oh, one thing I did forget. An item you're going to need is probably a sharp knife. Because <laughs> you're going to have... I had a good knife. I forgot to bring it down. But uh, you have to strip the ends off here so you can wrap it around. So let's just uh, strip that real quick. Hopefully without cutting myself off. Cutting my uh, fingers off anyway. Cutting something. Now, I may have to make this a bit uh, longer afterwards, but uh, we'll wait and see if this is enough. Should be enough. Yeah, let's use some side cutters to strip that off. Should come off pretty easy now. Yeah, there we go. And it's like almost like that. All right, doesn't want to come off. <laughs> there we go. I'm just going to twist it up uh, or it'll start fraying on us. We don't need that. Okay, so there's the uh, positive side. I think so, the black. Yeah. And now for the negative side. It's a bit more on that one. So, uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, this isn't uh, something for kids, you know, if you're... Uh, Shouldn't be uh, doing this. This should be something adults should be doing only. Uh, you got electricity involved. Um, you know, knives, dangerous stuff for kids. So definitely uh, for adults, so the kids there, uh, don't be doing this on your own. Make sure uh, 
if you want to do something like this that your parents assist you. Uh, I wouldn't even recommend you guys even trying it without uh, an adult present. Electricity for children doesn't mix. Okay, so we got uh, the, this basically is, uh, that should be, give it a bit more. Good to go on that. So let's just set this aside for now. Yeah, the, uh, the next item will be, well, let's uh, do the bucket. Not a whole lot of prep needed for the bucket. All basically we're going to do just for the uh, this side here, because this is going to go in like this. I basically, I'm going to want to just take two holes and I'm just going to punch in the side on either side of the corner of the bucket just so we can thread something in there just to hold the rod up. Uh, we don't want it following, following in because you don't want this touching the item that you're uh, taking the rust off of. So, again, a nice sharp knife should be good for this. Don't stick your fingers in behind. You don't want to be stabbing yourself. So, uh, just go ahead and uh, just poke a little hole. Just uh, it doesn't have to be too big. Just enough probably to get a coat hanger or a piece of wire for something to uh, hold the uh, the rod in place. That was probably too big, but that's okay. That'll work. So there we go. We got a hole here and a hole here. I mean, surely you probably could have used a drill, but hey. We're using things you can use around the house. We're doing this as easy as possible. And something that can just be done with the items you have uh, available. Okay. Now that's the bucket taken care of. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. Yeah. Probably going to need one more thing that I'll have to get uh, afterwards, but we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. So now, we're going to want to make the... Uh, the leads, the coat hanger. Again, this is going to be, uh, we have to get this coating off this coat hanger as well because it won't uh, connect. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to use these ends here because it'll make a nice loop hook. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut enough off here. I'm hoping you guys can see that, that I make a nice hook. Hopefully these cutters are good enough. I should be wearing my eye squints, but I'm going to look away. Holy that is not working well. Coat hangers are tough. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, eye protection. Make sure you wear eye protection when you're doing this. I, I'm just looking away when I'm doing it, so that way I don't uh, get anything in my eyes. Now you, I'm going to want this at a pretty good length, because I'm going to need to wrap it around the item that we're going to take the rust off of. So I'm going to need enough. Let's go ahead and take it... Uh, uh, let's make it pretty long on this one. I'll have to do something to the other side. Okay, so we're going to go... That should be... Nah, that's probably too much. Oh, yeah, let's go with there. So maybe about, I don't know, almost a foot. Maybe a little less. Maybe uh, 11 inches or so. Well, that was a lot easier. Okay, so again, we're going to make another one with the other side. I may have to utilize a bit of this. Let me get this off of here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and just use this hook side here, the uh, hanger part. That'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just sand this down real quick. Uh, I'll probably skip through it real fast to bore you guys with the details. And then we'll move on to uh, the other steps. Okay, there's one complete. Uh, coating is real easy to tell if you got that coating off. It's gone from like a, a yellow color just to a bare steel, bare steel color. All right, so now that we got uh, those cleaned up, we're gonna make the uh, just the part that goes inside the bucket there, so we can uh, secure this inside the bucket, the bar. So let's, uh, let's cut it long enough so we can twist it for now and we can trim it after. Remember guys, safety squints. That's probably not long enough. Shoot. Ah, we'll see. Coat hangers are cheap. Uh, this one here, I wouldn't worry too much about it being uh, stripped clean or anything. Okay, so what I'm going to do from the inside here, 
I'm just going to thread each one of these into each hole. So let's go in that one first. And then we'll come in here. So now I've got a, a loop I can put the, uh, the bar through in order so it doesn't flop around. And now what I'm going to do on this side, I'm just going to bring it in as tight as I can so that just enough room to get that in. And then we'll bring these in and tie them together just so it doesn't slip out. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. If it was fancy, we'd be doing it right. <laughs> I probably should have made one of these ahead of time, just so, you know, practice, but hey. This should be good enough for the people I work for. Alright, that should be that should be fine, actually. That, that's uh, bolted in there pretty tight. Um, I'll probably trim that off just so I don't... Yeah, let's do that now. Alright. There we go. Okay, now... Pretty sure we got everything uh, that we're going to need. The only thing now is we need a, a piece of wood or a dowel or something so we can rest the item across the top. So I'm just going to stop the video. I'm going to go grab something that I can use for that. And I'll be right back and we'll start assembly of this. Okay, guys. I think we are ready to go for assembly. I think I have everything I need. I went and grabbed some water. I forgot to mention that you'll need water. I kind of thought maybe that was implied. But anyway, we got some water there. Got my salt ready to go, and I only spilt like a few drops of water on the wife's floor, so it wasn't too bad on the way down. <laughs> All right, so let's take the uh, we're gonna take the positive bar or you know rebar works best. I actually I'm not even sure uh, if this will work yet, but uh, I got my fingers crossed. So I'm gonna go ahead and just insert it inside that uh, area I made. That way it can't fall over and knock into the item that we're. Uh, you know, taking the uh, rust off of. So off camera, I just went ahead and I made this a little longer. Uh, it just wasn't quite uh, long enough, I thought, to get a good uh, purchase on this. So we're just going to go ahead and wrap this around. And then I'm going to just twist it in on itself nice and tight, just so I know I got a good contact with the actual uh, bar. One's an anode, one's a cathode. I can't remember which is which. I, I'm not a you know, expert on these items. So anyway, okay, so we got that connected. Just remember, whenever you are dealing with this, whether you're taking something in or out or doing whatever, make sure it is unplugged. Do not do this while it's plugged in. I mean, you just don't want to do it. If you're dealing with water, electricity, you're going to want to keep, you know, all the, your power supply and everything away from the water in case it starts leaking, all that good stuff. All right. So here, also off camera, I, uh, I just bent up the coat hanger a little bit. I had to throw a couple extra kinks in it here, just because it was too long. It was too long to, uh, and this wouldn't have sat in very well. So I just made a few kinks just to make it shorter. And uh, just, you know, worked out well that this fits perfect. Uh, I mean, this will have to be adjusted for whatever you're putting in here. It could be something that you have a hole in it or whatever. So with this... I, I picked up, I uh, had this sitting there, some uh, molding I had laying around. And I'm going to use this on top to hang the item. Now for this one, we are going to hook the, uh, the white wire, the negative, we're going to hook to this coat hanger. And this one will be plenty long enough because the, uh, you know, the coat hanger is not as thick. So we're going to go ahead and connect this. And this should uh, allow the energy to get down into the item. Now there is one other step we're going to have to take care of is that uh, where it's connected to where the coat hanger is connected to this uh, uh, railroad pin here. Uh, we're going to need to clear off a spot on here just so the this metal is connecting well with this metal. We don't the rust it's a it's it's a good insulator it won't get through good enough. So we're going to take the sandpaper again and I'm just going to rough up a little area up in here where it's going to sit just so it uh, is connected well. Okay, we'll just see if that's going to be enough uh, seed on it. Let's just uh, 
have a look here. Make sure we got a good enough connection on it in that area. I don't know if I'm good out here. Let's try a different way. No, let's go this way. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're, I'm just going to do the actual corner here. All right, well, let's, uh, let's see if that'll work. So we'll just put that in there for now. But anyway, I'll just tip this over so you can see kind of what it looks like. I'm not sure if you guys can see in there. So anyway, let's go ahead. We're going to pull this out for now. I'm not plugged in yet. It is still unplugged. Here's the hot end. You don't want the pokey bit. It's got to be out of the wall before you do this. All right. Let's just... Ah, let's put the water in first. I thought the salt dilute as it's going down. Hopefully I got enough water. I brought a spare bucket there. Probably why I spilt it. I was carrying two buckets of water on the way in. Or down. I'm not going to have close to enough water. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. Ooh, this is not a sturdy container. Kind of need that going into it. All right, let's see if that is all the way submerged. And it is not. Uh... But I think we have enough room to get it down there because I don't want that down there. I want this up here. Ideally, you're going to want to get, uh, you know, tape or alligator clips. I'm going to probably get some later and just put um, solder these to some alligator clips and you just clip this on and off. It'd be a lot easier. Just didn't uh, have any handy at the moment. All right, it's touching the bottom, but that should be fine. Okay, we are fully submerged. We all hooked up. So let's go ahead. I'm going to plug this in. And uh, I'll just bring the camera over and we'll have a look down and see how it looks. And uh, we'll go from there. Just yeah, give me a few minutes. i got to make sure everything's out of the way and tidy so we don't uh, burn the house down. All that jazz. Alright. Well, there I go. Jumping the gun again. Let's... Uh, Add the salt. The electricity needs uh, a medium to, to flow through. Uh, normal water, it's not a great conductor. The salt uh, actually makes the water very conductive. Uh, like I said, there, there's other chemicals, there's other, there's a, a brand name detergent you can get. I can't remember the name of what it's used, which I'll probably get if this doesn't work. And then if this doesn't work, I'll let you know what it is. Uh, I'm going to put my nice clean hands in here, give it a little stir. Not that there's any dirt in there already. Just want to make sure all the salt that's in there gets dissolved and at least good enough for this. Basically, it's uh, about two two handfuls of salt that I put in there. I mean, uh, if you're not seeing enough reaction. You probably go with more. I, I've never tried this. I've never done it with. Uh, I've never made one of these ever. So I'm not even 100% of this works. I just know that salt water will conduct electricity. So. We're going off that principle and hoping it works. All right, uh, now I'm going to go get and plug this uh, pokey bit into the wall. So just give me a minute. Okay, guys, I, uh, I plugged it in. Everything seems to be working. It wasn't working at first, and I'll explain to you why in a sec. I actually did this whole segment already, and I guess I didn't quite hit the uh, on button on the camera, so I'll do it over. I had the, uh, the wires backwards. I did some research online, and I guess whatever I read was opposite. So the white one is going to go on to the, uh, this bar here and the uh, black cable without the white line is going to go on the uh, the item that you're taking the rest off of so make sure you get that right um, it's bubbling pretty good uh, just give me one sec I'm going to uh, bring the camera closer so you guys can come down and uh, have a look at the bubbles and it's working it's magic it's going to strip the rust right out of here the rust is going to be attracted over to the uh, the metal bar so yeah I'm not going to touch anything I don't want to mess with electricity so just let it do its thing give me one sec Okay, guys, I had to move it there, so it's unplugged right now. I'm just going to make find the camera. I've got a power bar here. I'm going to plug it in, and almost instantaneously, you're probably going to see the bubbles. You can already see the uh, change of the color in the water. 
it's already turned yellow just from the few minutes it was on. So there you go, instantaneously, there's the, uh, there's the magic happening right there. So yeah, uh, I mean, a lot of guys using these other stuff, you know, salt works just fine. You can put vinegar in it. Like, I won't know the actual result uh, until it's complete. Uh, but uh, I don't think it's going to take too long. Uh, we'll come down in a couple hours. We'll uh, check it out and we'll see what it looks like. So yeah, a real easy, uh, real easy rig to set up. I mean, anyone can do it. Uh, you know, any adult could do it. Uh, kids, don't do this. Uh, not without uh, a parent uh, definitely uh, helping you out and doing it for you for the most part. Okay, so let's uh, let this sit and we'll be right back in a couple hours. I'm going to go grab something to eat and we should see something good going on. All right, guys, see you in a minute. Hey, guys, welcome back to uh, Electrolysis Day 2 or Electrolysis Nightmare, as I like to call it. Uh, it was pretty close to bringing out the special tool, let me tell you. It was right there. Right there. <laughs> So I'm on transformer number five or six. Uh, what I was finding, I was using the uh, the plug transformers that you normally get a 12 volt DC plug. And I think what was happening, some of them I think overheated. Uh, one of them, it kind of seemed like the capacitors would just charge and then it would just stop. So it would start working and then it would stop. I'd have to unplug it, take this out, and then put it back in and it would start again. So it was just wasn't working. I tried to, I had a old battery pack thing that I had laying around it started working and I got ready to film again I started and it stopped <laughs> I think I've got it now what I did have was an old PC laying around and I went and grabbed uh, the power pack out of it it is DC and it can run pretty hot uh, voltage wise anyway so I'm gonna fire this up and I uh, hope it works <laughs> alright here we go you I'll bring the cam my other camera in, in a second uh, show you all right, so just give me one sec here, and I'll bring you in closer to have a look, and I'll tell you about the modifications I've okay, made. Okay, so here we are. As you can see, what I've done is I got a piece of actually copper wire. I actually found metal detecting, which is kind of good, and I've kind of bent it in a way where I can hook it on to the this. Uh, I I used a uh, another drill bit, so I've got a bit going across here, and my hot is connected right over here. So if you can see, let's see if it'll focus there. It's connected right there. And then it comes down, and then I got the uh, on the other drill bit right here. Focus. Of course not. I got to get it between. Don't worry, it won't shock me. So there's the other connection there that goes down into the side piece that we had done or I had done earlier. So now the only difference is, and the, I guess the only complication I ran into was it's not complicated. I just the uh, in order to get the power to supply to work outside of the PC is you need to find the green wire on the main plug and it just shut off on me. I probably did something. Probably shorted it. Anyway, the green uh, the green one here, you got to jump it into any black cord. So that's where the jumper cables are. I probably knocked it out there. I got to see what I did, but uh, that's okay. It'll, it'll work. <laughs> I didn't hurt it. I think I just disconnected something there when I was playing with it. All right, so let me uh, get this back uh, down where it was and we'll carry on. So just give me one sec, see if I can get this started again. All right, okay, so everything's fine with the power supply. I just shut it off right now just to uh, finish this off. Just makes a little noise with the fan going. So everything's uh, good, which is awesome. Everything seems to be running all right. It's been going for about 10 minutes now. But uh, yeah, so just remember you got to jump that. If you're anyone ever uses a power supply, you have to jump that uh, lead just to get it to work or it won't go. Uh, yeah, so everything seems to work fine. What I need to do though is I really need to uh, like tape up or maybe silicone around these wires just to keep them from moving. If I hit them at all, it just shuts off. I guess the power supply won't work if it's not connected. But that's fine. I didn't have to use the uh, the persuader, so we're all good. So I, yeah, I took the uh, spike off like I mentioned. That was just to test it. And I originally thought maybe I was trying to clean too big of an object. So that's why I switched out with that uh, handle that I have in there now. I have a few other things there that I want to uh, clean up, like this weird item, this uh, neat hook. Got a couple of horseshoes, uh, this little file that I found, and I have this uh, this plate here is kind of neat. I'm not sure what it belonged to, but I found it at that uh, old house site, 
And it's either a 9 or a 6, and it looks like it would have been a plate that it was on something, so it's kind of neat. Uh, I mean, it can't be that old, it's aluminum, but uh, it's definitely got some age to it. I'm not too sure how aluminum's going to work in there, but we'll see. We'll give it a whirl. Uh, so, yeah, that's about it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this run probably for another hour or so, and then I'll come back down and uh, just see how it's going, let you see how the rust is coming off, and uh, then we'll wrap it up. All right, guys, we will see you in, well, a split second. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, guys, well, it looks like it's been going pretty good. Uh, it's been on for about an hour and a half now, so everything looks pretty good. Everything's working fine. Finally, things are working. Didn't have to bring out that hammer. <laughs> anyway, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the water's kind of gone like a weird uh, greeny color. I'm not sure if that's because of the copper. I'm not sure, but anyway, it's working. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut it down. I'll bring you in a little closer, have you come down and have a look. We'll pull out the metal and uh, we'll see what it looks like and then we'll go from there. So just give me one more sec. We'll uh, set the camera up there and we'll be right back. Okay, so I guess you can see now it is bubbling away. You can see the uh, color of the water. There's one thing I did mention. Uh, well, I was just trying different things. There. I did put some uh, OxyClean in there earlier with it. Uh, just to see what kind of uh, reaction that would make. and. Uh, to see uh, if it would help, uh, you know, help the metal come out a little cleaner towards the end. But let me go ahead and shut the motor down or the, uh, the uh, power supply. All right, so that's all done. So now we're safe to pull everything out. Everything should be good. So yeah, looking pretty good. So yeah, a lot of it's just coming right off. Well, that looks a lot better. This was pretty uh, gummed up there when I uh, put it in. But it's only been about an, you know, an hour, hour and a half, somewhere in there. So I'm sure if I ran this underwater, a lot of this would actually come off. It's coming off right in my hand. So yeah, this is working quite well. Uh, I'm glad it's actually working. That's great. I may have to uh, reset this onto this piece because it looks like it's cleaning most of the plate. It doesn't look like a lot of it's getting into here. And it could be just because of the way it's centered. All right, so that's pretty good. Everything seems to be working. So yeah, like I said, this is a down and dirty, quick way to set something up to clean your stuff. Just thought I'd share it with you. I'm actually the first time I've done it, so I thought I'd bring you along. I uh, probably should have brought you through the uh, issues that I had, but uh, I, you know, I just wanted to get it working. So, all right, so I'll turn it back on, and hopefully I didn't move that too much, and it should start going again. Just let me find the power button here. So we should see it bubbling again any second. I touched it. There. Where are they? Yeah, there we go. It's starting now, I believe. Let's move this over a little. Uh, see, as soon as you touch it, it changes polarity. It shuts the uh, power supply down. Just let me. I may not have a good connection on here. Let's try that again. There we go. Yeah, I find if you touch it while the power supply is going, it shuts down. So I don't know if it's it's seeing the differentiating between the polarities when you move it, and it might just shut it off. But it will continue going. I, I do see a few bubbles coming up there. Yep, there we go. Okay, so there we go. Let me uh, just set the camera back up at the other side here, and we'll finish this off. Yeah, there it comes. that video I hope it helps out anyone that uh, may be wanting to build one of these like I said there's a lot more improvements that can be made to this obviously this is just a temporary jug I'm gonna have a nicer one this is just uh, down dirty basically how to do it to get it done you can configure it how you, however you want I mean you can uh, even punch a hole through your container and put that balance rod right through it and connect on the outside uh, again I plan on getting little alligator clips to clip these on I'm probably going to use some that I have over here. And uh, yeah, this is just get it running. Probably if you had like a good laptop power supply, a DC, 
power supply, that would probably be, work a lot better. I just kind of exhausted all the uh, power supplies I had laying around. Apparently just the plug-in one isn't, uh, wasn't strong enough for uh, the size that I got going on here. Okay, thanks for being here guys. Remember, hit go down, hit subscribe, like, share, and as always, I'll see you next time. And don't hit those wires because it shuts it off. <laughs> Alright guys, we'll talk to you later.